All right. This seems a bit weird that you have these really icy lumps of rock. I, 20, I mean, it's still mind boggling. It's 20 times further than planet X, which is already a lot further than Pluto. If it even exists. Yeah, if it exists. So what is going on? This is a bit interesting, let's say that nonetheless. Yeah, so this Oort cloud is the most hypothetical bit of the solar system. Because obviously we can't see it out there, right? No. Estimates are it contains between 10 to the 11 and 10 to the 12 comets more than a kilometre in size. Okay. Um, and, and the kilometre size ones the are the ones... estimates actually come from some of my own research. Okay. Um, and it's very, very uncertain. Okay. Because we don't see the Oort cloud. All we see is these things coming in to visit us. Yep. Um, which actually means the Oort cloud outnumbers everything else in the solar system by a huge factor. Yeah, as I say, if there's that so that's, many... So that's a thousand times more than the asteroids yeah. and the Kuiper Belt put together. So there's a lot of things out there. The first question is, how did they get out there in the first place? Did they form out there? Were they yeah. formed further in and scattered out? Yeah, this is, this is, I guess, what I'm always wondering. So why do they come in? Why all of a sudden they're like, eh, it's good a time to go and crash at, you know, Jupiter. Why? And also there's a puzzle about why they are still out there. Yeah. So let's go through these. Um, so how did they get out there in the first place? Well, remember we talked about how all these protoplanetary disks, all these icy planetesimals yeah. in the outer part, and a lot of these got scattered out when Jupiter and Saturn migrated. Yep. So our best guess is that uh. these things formed in the outer parts of the solar system. It's all the missing mass in the Kuiper Belt. Remember, the Kuiper Belt is far less massive than it should have been. A lot of what was there originally probably got scattered out. So we think Jupiter and Saturn just pushed all of this really small bit really far out, and it got stuck at the essentially the limit of what it can before it escapes. Well, some did escape altogether, yes. most certainly. So, um, and remember, it's very hard for Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune to push things out and move the perihelion out. Yep. That was the whole reason why we think there might be a planet X. That's right. But this probably happened when the solar system was very young and it was still in a cluster of stars. Okay. And so what probably happened was these things got scattered out and then the gravity of other stars in that uh, cluster, yeah, other okay. stars being much closer then, yeah. probably gave it enough of a pull to bring the perihelion up. And so these things end up in orbits that never came near the sun, yep. which is how they can survive 4.6 billion years without melting. So that's our idea about where they got there in the first place, most likely, because we actually can't think of any way they could have formed out there. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it's probably... Then the next question is, why did they come in to visit us? Yeah, this... I mean, it, it just doesn't make sense all the sun, it just randomly comes in at the sun. Yes, I mean, these things... Uh, I mean, it could be like the asteroid, two of them collide, and that if you have head-on collision, that gets rid of their angular momentum and they fall in. But most likely, it's caused by tides and by passing stars. Okay. So if you remember, we live in a Milky Way galaxy. Yep. And the Milky Way applies tides to our solar system. That's right. Just like the Earth applies tides to the Moon and yep. Jupiter applies tides to Io. Well, these tides aren't very big, but bear in mind these things are only very tenuously tied to the yeah, solar system. I They're mean, a light year out. They just need a little bit of a push to go. And so it could be that the tide slowly warps the orbits and brings some of them in where we can see them. Okay. The other thing that would do it is passing stars. So this is our galaxy. We talked about this in the stars course. Yep. And the stars in our galaxy are orbiting around the middle of different orbits and wheeling yep. past each other like cars on a freeway, zooming in and out and overtaking. And what this means is on a fairly regular basis, other stars will come within a light year or two of the Earth. Yeah, and again, it's, you know, it's still far away, but if you're just barely on the edge of the solar system, as you said, you don't need that much of a nudge to change. Yes, yeah, so that's right. So the idea is that some combination of these tides and the uh, passing stars. Right now, the nearest star is four light years away. Yep. But you know, it's within the last 10 million years, stars have come closer. And a star that came closer 10 million years ago could well have started off some of these comets that we're now seeing yeah. on their orbit. Hey, if, it us. if it takes 10 million years to get here, it would have happened 10 million years ago. Okay. Uh, so uh, odds are that some combination of tides and passing stars, most of these things stay out there, but a yep. few of them are warped in. Okay. But there is a problem with this, which is these two techniques, passing stars and tides, are rather too good at removing oh. stars from the Oort cloud. Okay. They first want to explain why it's all around. Probably yep. it started off being scattered out of the same plane like the Kuiper belt, yep. but all these passing stars and the tide Pull move them around, and yep. so after four billion years it's now in all directions. Yep. But the trouble is that they would also probably, on the four billion years, have actually removed the Oort cloud. Okay. So it's a puzzle why it's still there. These stars, passing stars and tides, can bring them in to visit us, which we need, yep. but they can also pull, pull them out yeah, and that's right. lose them to the solar system. And if you expect even half of them every time to go out, you'd expect the, us to start running out of them, I guess, over time. That's right. So that's the puzzle of why they are still here today. And the idea we have about this is that there's the 
outer Oort cloud between 20 and 60,000 astronomical units out. Yep. What we think must be there is an inner Oort cloud, oh, which so goes from like planet X 1,000 out to 20,000 astronomical units. Yep. And we don't see this um, directly, because, uh, for reasons I'll explain in a minute. But what happens is when you get a particularly close passing star, it might strip off the outer Oort cloud, but stir up comets in the inner Oort cloud and bring them out to the outer Oort cloud. Okay. All right. So you kind of essentially every time you get something passing through, you kind of mix it. So the stuff rises to the top and goes to the, out or the outer Oort cloud, but we still then have stuff still in the inner Oort cloud. Yeah, so it's kind of like for a shopping analogy, we've talked about ice creams. Yeah. The inner Oort cloud might be the, the warehouse. Okay, yeah. That's where they, uh, they store these uh, ice creams. And then the outer Oort cloud would be like the ice cream shops. Okay. So every now and then a really close passing star springs them from the inner Oort cloud out to the outer Oort cloud. And then the passing stars are my children stealing all the ice cream? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> and then a passing star that doesn't come so close all the tides might bring them in to see us. Okay. 